Okay, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to work with the listening in particular section one. I consider it, I personally consider that for the listening test, the most important factor, the decisive factor is not your English language level, is not your vocabulary level or grammar level or your listening level as well, it's your concentration. Because although some students have perfect English, they, for example, they have got very high scores in the other sections of the test, but still they end up getting a low score in the IELTS listening test because of concentration problems. Concentration is the main factor which decides your score in the listening test. That's why you have to be fully, fully focused on the question. You do have to switch off everything on your mind, forget about all your problems, all things which pops up in your mind, try to fox it, try not to get distracted, pay full attention to the listening test while you are doing it. Okay, today in this video we'll discuss with you section one. Although section one is considered the easiest section, still many students end up making more mistakes in this section because of the concentration problems. Because they think that, okay, this test is very easy. I don't have to pay a lot of attention. I can, like, say, I can sail through this test. They think so. And as a result, they end up making a lot of mistakes. And another factor which complicates listening test section one in particular is that they often make very, very confusing answers. While we are discussing the questions now, I will give you examples of confusing questions and confusing answers which often distract students from getting the right answer or getting the right uh, correct answer. Okay, so this is a hotel booking from and this is questions one to five. Pay attention to the instructions. Write no more than two words and or a number. Let me first briefly explain what does this mean means. Uh, it means that you're allowed to write two words or you're allowed to write a number or you can write a number and two words. This means that if you write, for example, if you write blue car, it's correct, two words. If you write one blue car or two blue cars, it's also correct because even though you're writing three things, one of them is a number and two of them are words. So two words plus one number is accepted in these kind of instructions when you have such instructions. Or writing one number is also perfectly acceptable. So you have already one example, arrival date is given a length of stay. So we have to find how long do the people who are um, booking a hotel, booking a room in the hotel are going to stay. Pay attention, they often confuse you. For example, they say, at the beginning we planned to stay for a week, but then we had to make changes and when then we decided to stay only for five days. You see how they confuse you. Students are in a rush, in a hurry. They first they catch that at the beginning we planned to stay for one week. They catch the one week from the answer and they write one week in the answer. But it's wrong, it's not one week. They change it there. Uh, opinion, they decision and they now decided to stay only for five days. So five days will be correct answer. So there are a lot of such cases in which they simply confuse you. They firstly give wrong answers and then the correct answers or at the beginning they give the correct answers and then they give confusing wrong answers. That's why section one is very perplexing. Type of accommodation. You have to find in what kind of accommodation they're planning to stay like one room, two rooms, so you have to find. Name, you have to find the family name of these uh, people, Mr. and Mrs. their surname you have to find, and children. Question four, address, you have to find the address. Pay attention, half of the address has already been written for you, but most students, they don't pay attention. They are in a quiet, in a hurry while they're listening to the recording. They don't read carefully what answers are, are all they have written for them, for example, 29 tower is written, yeah? While they're giving address, they start in the recording like this. So 29 tower hearts, if they are in a hurry, that's why they again write 29 tower. Although it has already been written, they don't pay attention that 29 tower has already been written. So don't make such silly mistakes. Read carefully what answers, what parts of the answer have already been written for you in the answers. Then you have to find the contact telephone. You have to practice a lot. You have to get 
your ears, uh, you have to make your ears get used to catching numbers and uh, letters because they are often given in section one. Let's move to question six to ten. So tourist board questions for holiday makers. So six, you have to find a favorite activity. Oh, one thing, please pay attention. Instructions, the same, two words and or a number. So it's up to you. You can write uh, one word, you can write two words, you can write one number, or if you write two number, uh, words plus one number, it's still perfectly accepted, not considered incorrect. So favorite activity, again, be very careful. There might be lots of traps in the listening recording. For example, they may first say, we used to enjoy cycling, but now uh, we enjoy or we get pleasure from walking with the whole family more often. So they say so. So most students who are in a hurry, they write only, they only listen to the first part, like cycling, and they write in the answer cycling, but unfortunately it's incorrect. It was in the past, it was their past favorite activity in the past, but now they enjoy walking, so walking will be correct answer. Next, beaches. Busy, but, pay attention, busy, if the beach is busy, it's negative, yeah? It's crowded, it's full of people. But, there is a linking word, but, but it means now an opposite word is coming, is, is coming up after this word. So, busy is negative for a beach, and now we need the positive adjective. Busy, but, big, busy, but, comfortable, something like this. So you need to write one positive adjective. It's highly likely that there is a positive adjective after one negative adjective because of the linking word but. Next one, shop staff, workers of a shop, or sometimes. So you need to find one word here. It's maybe it's adjective, shop staff, or sometimes busy, or sometimes something. So we need adjective here. Waitress and quick. Pay attention. And links two words which are close to each other. Which are close to each other. Quick, it's a positive adjective for waiters. If waiters are quick, they work fast, it's a very positive point for them. So we need to find one more positive adjective. For example, friendly and quick. What else? Um, for example, Mm, can be polite and quick, so you need to find one positive adjective here. Suggestions, last question, need some for hire. In terms of grammar, the word some is, can be used in two cases. Uh, after some, we can use uncountable noun, for example, some help, some money, some or time, it's uncountable noun, or we can use plural also, some people, some workers, some children, something. So there is a word for hire. For hire, it means to take somebody for a job, to take, um, to accept somebody for a job for a limited period of time, for a while, yeah? So, because of the word for high, I guess there must be plural noun. Some workers, some waiters, some, so plural noun. It's highly likely that there is a plural noun here. Okay, that's all for the explanations of questions 1 to 10. Look through the questions very, very carefully. Listen to my audio explanations. And in the next video, you can find the audio recording of this test and you can try yourself doing this test. And after you have finished the audio, listening to the audio recording and you have found the answer, you have tried uh, finding the answers on your own, then I will give you detailed explanations of the correct answers.